today there are a couple of things very important things which we need to understand guys before we move on the first thing is we need to know about the billing how exactly the charges are calculated that needs to be understood by us first okay second we need to understand what exactly is availability sets okay what exactly is availability zone you need to understand focus on the resiliency and the redundancy part of vms that is something we need to keep in mind third we need to understand the vm families what are the family series on what basis will you select which vm will you go randomly select any vms okay no that is not how it works in reality you need to be very specific which vm you want to select what is the type of the vm what will be the importance of the vm and things like that you need to select okay so let's let's start and let's go and look into how do we calculate the charges that is the first thing we need to go and see so in order to calculate the you can go on to google and on google the only thing you need to go and look for is it azure calculator so this is a place wherein you can go and get the azure calculator so basically this will help you calculate your expenses on virtual machine whatever you're creating like suppose when you create a virtual machine guys you see a charge over there that this will cost you this much of amount per hour okay if you guys don't remember let's go to the portal as well and let me show you so you get an idea like when you try to spin up any vms or any resources you get an idea that what is the costing okay but that is not an exact uh, exact price guy that is just an estimate that you may get charged this much of amount okay so that is not exact the reason why it is not exact because when you create a vm vm is not the only thing you create okay so when you create a vm vm is not the only thing there are multiple other things which gets created along with vm such as your public ip your virtual network your nic card your disk your operating system there are so many things gets created along with it now for example when you try to create a vm let's wait okay when you try to create a vm and when you try to select this size now do you see when you select this size you're getting a option over you what is the costing per month so this is in inr guys so this is you get an idea when you select this vm what could be a possible costing for this vm in a month okay and you see some something written as standard b2 standard ds1 and this is what they recommend and all this so what exactly is this you need to understand this first these are vm families based on this families you will be selecting your vms so these families are segregated into categories okay so they, these are say, segregated into categories such as if you have high you cpu uses your application is using high cpu then you got specific vms for high cpu you got specific v vms for high compute you got specific vms for high graphics so if you're using something which has which is which has a requirement of high graphics then you will have specific vms to those how do you get it how do you know which family to select so you can just look for azure vm family on google it will take you to the vm sizes this is the place so these are the two things which you need to consider when you do something so these are the types general purpose compute optimized memory optimized storage optimized gpu high performance compute so when do you use general purpose so this is basically used for your general purposes such as like we are doing the testing 
we are creating a vm and we are hosting any vms on top of it application on top of it then we'll you need general purpose so this will have balanced cpu and memory ratio so it will not be a drastic change so like if you have 2v cpu then it will have 4 gig of memory if you have 4v cpu it will have 8 gig or 16 gig of memory so this is balanced 2 into 2 ratio this is balanced this is this is what called as balanced cpu to memory ratio this is ideal for testing and development and small to medium databases and low to medium traffic web servers okay guys so if you have anything as such so th these are the sizes which you can go and select for now if you see this this is what b2 is now if you want to know more about the sizes you can simply go and see all sizes and you will get everything over here see this these are all the sizes which you can go and select from now this is what balance is called 2v cpu 4 gig of memory 2v cpu 8 gig of memory and this is how and everyone has each and like this v cpu ram data disk max io ps this is iops temp storage how much temp storage do we have premium disk supported premium disk is nothing but ssd okay so wherever you don't see supported that means it is not supporting ssd then at that time in those vms will be have hdd okay that is what premium disk is all about guys okay so this is general purpose some second one is compute optimized compute optimized in which you will have high cpu wherein you have an application or you have a database wherein the requirement is you need more cpus in it it takes more processing units in that cases you will need compute optimized so you have to go and select come down and you come to f series and in the f series and these are costly these are very costly vms guys so keep that in mind now this you can see you can have 8v cpu these are compute optimized up to 2x performance boost for vector processing workloads so if you have any such workloads then it will have 2x performance boost that is what compute optimized is all about then you got something called memory optimized high memory to cpu so this is basically used in databases guys this memory optimized so databases there are many inbound and outbound traffic many inbound requests and outbound IOPS hap happens on the disk. So in such cases, you will have to use something called memory optimized. So high memory to CPU ratio, great for relational database servers. So basically, as I said earlier, this is memory optimized is used in databases wherein you will be using a lot of memories. So whenever you set up a database from scratch on any VM, at that time you will need more memories than CPU. Okay, so in such cases, you'll have memory optimized these are the family series e series and somewhat d series which you can use storage optimized wherein you will need more storages hide high disk throughput ideal for big data sql so if you're setting a big data solution for yourself and you want to dump data at some location in your vm so this is where this is what you will be using it okay now in Azure you got graphic also wherein you will have GPU optimized wherein they are using NVIDIA and all these graphic cards onto your VM and even that is getting attached. So if you are working for any company wherein you are doing more of edi editing, editing video editing, gaming, all this purpose for all this purpose you are using any VMs online then this is the place guys GPU very costly wherein you want to do rendering and all then in that cases this is a specialized vms which you can go and select for your gpu uses this is very costly affair guys so make sure to check cost before you go and make any decisions and last but not the least high performance compute our fastest and most powerful virtual machines with optimal high throughput network interface so in this you will have high throughput network interface so you even your network 
interface which it will be connected to it will have high throughput so basically the bandwidth will be very high in such VMs okay these are the families so you have to keep in mind whenever you're designing so why exactly do we know this do do we have to know this whenever you're designing like you don't just think from the DevOps perspective okay after DevOps the next is senior DevOps then you will have solution architect solution architect this is the, the these are the things which you need to design that how what my VMs will be where my application will be you need to understand the parameters of your application the merits of your application so your application is using high CPU high memory or balanced CPU you need to know you need to check with the development team and you need to know you need to check with your load team what exactly the load is how the application is behaving what are the computes the application is using based on those understandings you need to create your infrastructure you cannot just blindly go and create anything guys okay so you have to have better planning better understanding and you have to know about the charges you cannot keep on increasing the compute you cannot just do horizontal scaling or you can you cannot just simply do a vertical scaling and just keep on adding VMs 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 you need to have proper planning so for that you need to understand this families very well you don't need to uh, remember anything I just go on and just look to the pages and the reason you don't have to remember because this family keeps on changing there will be additional and deletion this they will obsolete some VMs family they will add something so it's better it's always better to go and look what exactly you are doing okay once you understand this family well you need to know how do we calculate the charges how do we calculate the charges this is the place wherein the actual calculator will have calculation will happen now again I am telling this is just an estimate guys a nearby estimate you can say but not the exact price the reason there are local taxes which will be added later there are some network traffic which you can we cannot initially calculate that how many inputs output will happen and things like that what you can calculate you can calculate the VM cost you can calculate the public IP at stretch you can even calculate network in and out but not exactly numbers you cannot you cannot get it you can calculate this size and things like that okay so yeah this is a pricing nearby pricing you can say but not the exact pricing by this calcul calculator you will get an idea what are we expecting in uh, down the line what will be the costing down the line you can have a expectation set yeah it will definitely will uh, will be somewhere nearby if you're not launching anything extra okay so how do we calculate now at the left hand side you can see everything related to compute networking storage mobile or containers and things like that now if you go to compute you can see all your virtual machine virtual machine skill set kubernetes so it says these are all your compute which is basically using compute services now in this i want to go into virtual machines okay this is added now if i come down you'll see a virtual machine and now from here you can select which virtual machine it is okay if you can which re region you're selecting the virtual machine as if now we're using east us and we are using linux over here tier standard and basic so we'll still put standard kindly so put yourself in okay so tier standard category all so these are all categories but if you want to segregate with family then you got the options over here also so i'll stick with all because i've already selected the inst instant type that is d2 okay so how many virtual machines do you want this is one for how many hours this 730 hours is basically 30 days guys so in a day that is 24 hours if you calculate it comes somewhere around 720 hours but if you want with days like you want 30 31 days or something like that then you can even select this okay so this is your this is what you see this is your virtual machine and there are compute pay as you go the one which we which which I am using right now the subscription type pay as you go 
so my free tier got expired guys so i have upgraded myself as pay as you go so now if you see this subscription of mine this is i'm using a pay as you go subscription so what exactly it means so whatever compute you use whatever resources you use based on hourly basis you'll get charged so this is my subscription which is pay as you go okay let's go back now if you have you can even make plannings like in your company you can make planning that i want this vm for one year two year three years so that is something you can select one year reserve so if you if you select one year reserve there is a 40 percent discount so if you know that this application will there with the company for at least one year then you can do select this options so there is an option of billing in which you can reserve this vm so this vm will be basically reserved for you for one year and you have to upfront pay one year costing with 40 percent discount so this is how you can select the billing and all now manage disk along with vm there is a temporary disk which will be allocated so if you need to pay for that as well so standard hdd or standard ssd so there are two types hdd and ssd ssd is more optimized and this is more performance oriented so if you want more performance in your vm then select ssd okay lrs and zrs i'll explain you that later for now just select the disk size how many disks so 256 gigabytes how many disks do you want so i just select one okay add storage additional storage transaction what will be the transaction so let's imagine that i'll have at least 10000 transaction so this is just imagination guys uh, you may have more transaction or you may have less transaction, but this is minimum. I'm keeping 10,000 transaction Bandwidth What is the bandwidth you want in, 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 in within the region outside internet? What is the bandwidth? So can you select that so for now? I'm selecting 10 GB of data will be transferred here and there This is what we are selecting again guys. This is we are just doing assumptions this may differ when you start actually doing so that is the reason i said this is just an estimate this is not exact figure so don't take it as exact figure it will be you can take it as a nearby figure so whenever you are quoting someone so this is basically when you're quoting the pricing to someone so you need to mention this point very well these are estimates there could be a change in the final pricing as well okay so this was about your vm so the total costing for your vm is 110 dollars monthly but this is not the only thing with the vm you need to have networking you will have virtual network you will have ip address and if you're using best there's a costing for best also so let's go and fill in the information of virtual network so this virtual network is the are you using NAT? the are you using virtual network pairing all this costing you can keep it over here do you use how many ips are you using so one ip for now do you have any static ip uh, yes i do have a static ip i need to assign a static ip also okay then that's it now if i go up at the very top this is my virtual machine costing this is my virtual network this is my ip address costing and do you need support from microsoft yeah if you need support included developer standard professional all these support types you can include then there's a costing for that also like for developer 29 dollar per month this is the final cost again estimate nothing final over here make sure so whenever you're launching anything till the time you are there in the free tier there are free tier vms which you can launch which will not cost anything to you but once you go out of free tier and once you go into pay as you go everything is chargeable guys everything is chargeable when i say everything is chargeable there's nothing free tier over here now 
they will start charging you for any compute you do so everything will start getting built to you so make sure once you're done delete keep a practice of deleting of uh, delete deleting everything deleting everything i'm talking about only when you're doing your development work your testing work guys don't go and delete resources in actual companies okay that is they will pay now if you see this this is the free even the free tier is costing me around 1500 rupees per month this is if you check in free tier this is free completely free this vm is free okay but in reality now it will cost me this is how the calculation happens guys and depending upon your calculation if you want to add something more like compute you want to add aks clusters and all you're free to add based on that the charges will be applicable the charges will keep on popping and your charges will be applicable over here how many hours you want to create how many computes you want to create what is a standard and what is basic if you want to create based on that things will start getting added to your bucket list this is how the charges are calculated make sense okay so this is very important guys understand how the billing happens understand how the calculation happens and when you go to your subscription if you have access firstly so in reality this is all done by the administrators in in companies this if you have access to your subscription page then you can come and view how the billing so now this was the last bill which i have paid 128 rupees which is very around one and a half dollar okay this is what how, this is what i have paid now if you want to check all the invoices you can go and check all the invoices and you can see how many i have paid so this is this month that was around november i have paid around 1.24k so this is the maximum i have paid in cloud so exactly what i was doing over here so i had multiple vms which was running my kubernetes cluster and that was up for more than 15 20 days so hence that that was the costing i had a master node i had a worker node and there was multiple application so there was a kubernetes class which was going on wherein i had couple of vms created over here okay that is the reason this is the costing which i got okay now you can at the left hand side you can see your cost analysis you can set up cost analysis if, if you want to analyze your cost like what will be my monthly cost based on your uses you can see your monthly costings over here i cannot see right now because i was not using this account for last one month that is the reason you can see the costing is very less i was using a different free tier account now you can see the cost analysis you can see the for forecast unavailable because there's no forecasting and there's no much things i am doing over here that is the reason nothing data is available okay you can see all your invoices over here this will be applicable only when you have access to this most of the time you will not have access to this so this is the costing which i have paid most of the time now if you want to see what exactly i have done over here you can go and look into the invo invoice id and you can download your invoice and you can know what exactly i have done over here okay even that way you can see at the top you can go and download your invoice okay so this is about and uses and quota this is something we discussed yesterday even in pay as you go there are restrictions guys you cannot blindly go and create anything whatever you want there are restrictions so in order to avoid such thing if you want like suppose you want to have 10 public ips so in free tier what did i say yesterday that the maximum you can create how many public ips three now if you want more than three in such cases you need to go and request microsoft so in my free tier all this option was grayed down now but in my pay as you go if you see this is not grayed out if i want to increase total regional vcpu so in australia central i can just have 10 maximum vcpus created if i want more i need to go and edit this request for increase so this is adjustable yes means you can do it by yourself you don't have to talk to microsoft for doing this 
no means and this i can means you need to speak to microsoft tell them the reason why do you need you already have 25000 virtual machine enabled why do you need more you need to tell them okay this is now if you talk about com networking you can come to networking section also and now if you see public ip so in my pay as you go how many public ips i can create 20 and if i want to increase more i can even go and increase more 20 i can already create that is more than sufficient guys okay but in free tier it is only three how many network security groups i can create 5000 if you want more speak to or raise a request to support ticket so this is how your quota thing uses and quota things are managed from you from your subscription itself Alex, okay Alex, so this yeah. sorry uh, about the quota the the value showing right it is for hmm. this uh, account or complete for the uh, um, area i mean like uh, zone showing is yeah this is just for your account just okay. this subscription this tenant which you have created this is just for your account now if i have one more account suppose and if i just go in you will have same set same sort of limits over there also in my case i have increased multiple limits guys so your pay as you go my pay as you go may differ because i have multiple things i have increased in my subscription okay no so answering to your question this is just a my information my account also, yeah also if i can if i create a instance with like two cpu and 256 gb uh, virtual machine so can i extend it by adding more more storage to the existing uh, instance yes. one why not so there are two types of scaling you can do we'll talk about that later horizontal scaling and vertical scaling so in vertical scaling if you want to add more computes to your existing vms yes you can do you can scale you can any given point of time you can scale up scale out add more disk and things like that you can do to that vm so this is very flexible vms computes which you can create and any given point of time you want to add something more you want to auto scale you want to scale out scale in whatever you want to do you can easily do it there's no i can I, i'll show you when the once i create a vm i'll show you if you want to upgrade or if you want to scale out to a different version or different compute like suppose you have created basic you have created a vm today from the basic family now suddenly there's a spike and now there is a change in requirement now you need more memory optimized vms what you will do you will delete into it no you can do a scale scale up easily you can go and select that uh, other family compute and you can just scale your existing vm to that family that can be easily done you can change it from your uh, b class to l class or d class very easily make sense yeah yeah okay guys so this was a very quick understanding what exactly things are how things are working this is very basic you need to know it even though this is very calculation billing it's very basic but this plays a very important role when you start working on any project what is the company's requirement that you deliver the project in a cost effective manner and if you are able to do it let mark my words people will reach out to you for every such things okay one one uh, uh, experience i want to share with you guys i was working with one of the startup i was newly joined to that startup as a it manager wherein i was responsible to handle the complete devops and cloud infrastructure so that was a startup company and they were not aware how this billing happens on at that time i was working on aws so they were very new to this cloud they were dumping vms like 
mad madness they were creating vms ec2 instance and things like that they were using big data solution like emr elastic map reduce and all this they were using but when they hired me what their expectation was that they want to reduce their cost 50 percent from 100 percent if suppose if they're getting charged one uh, ten thousand dollars then they want to reduce it to five thousand dollar and then the my main role was to optimize the cost though i was hired to set up the complete infra big data solutions for them but this is what they have given to me and mark my word this was very simple for me considering i was well versed with aws i was aws professional and i by just seeing the infrastructure i got to know where all things what all things i can make changes firstly i checked the vms i checked the logs i checked the monitoring i saw there's no cpu spike hardly they are using 10 percent of cpu in maximum vms i see the storage 80 percent of storage is lying without any uses then slowly and steadily started moving all the vms to a lower cost vm set up uh, auto scaling like in case there is a spike i may be wrong in 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 a year there there are two days when when there is a spike correct i may be wrong so i'm putting things behind behind auto scaling so that if the cpu spike is more than 85 percent there is a vm getting at it this way i was able to reduce more than five thousand dollar per month costing for that company within within a month so if you have good knowledge how the calculator works if you know where to make changes if you know how to make changes then you can go long run in this cloud role of yours okay so keep that in mind this is not just for time pass this is this comes very handy when when you're managing the complete thing and when you're designing most importantly from the architect perspective when you're designing the complete flow so this becomes very handy okay so yeah let's move on to the next topic anyone has any questions before i move on to the next and very important topic and where's my ppt if anyone has any question please do let me know while i'm opening a ppt okay so the next topic is we'll talk about availability and resiliency in azure now what exactly is availability and what exactly is resiliency can anyone tell me the basic definition of why do what is resiliency or redundancy in short when i say resiliency what do we understand by resiliency is resilience like um the ability to um still continue working when there's a failure perfect very good yes so the ability to be resilient in case of disaster can i say that so even though if there's any issues your things are resilient like take an example of uh, of yourself like if there are there are so many issues going around in the world there's a russian war going on there are it layoff happening but we are still resilient that i need to learn more i need to succeed i need to have some parallel path created so that i'll be stable in my life that is an example of resiliency in correct same goes with cloud you have your vm you have your email application running on that virtual machine what if because of some unforeseen reason the vm itself is down do you think your business is out of gone for a toss no definitely no you want your business to continue what's your continuity plan that means how your business will continue so that is where this resiliency redundancy availability comes in picture you want your business continuity plan to be ready you want your dr plan that is this is disaster recovery plan to be ready the region in which your vm is created the region completely it's down east us suppose there's a flood the data center is down completely what how will you handle such unforeseen reason you have something in japan region your japan there's a japan is prone to earthquakes correct so there's an earthquake the data center has demolished 
what you will do can you control that is it in your control no how do you handle such scenarios so in order to handle such scenario we got okay in order to handle such scenario we got multiple options in azure such as availability zones we need to understand what exactly is availability zones we need to understand availability sets what exactly it is we need to understand virtual machine skill sets we need to understand what is load balancer azure storage redundancy azure side recovery these are the things which you need to focus on keeping in mind your resiliency availability and your disaster recovery in mind now before you go and understand all these options you need to understand how this region works in azure what is this region how exactly it works okay so we you, you, you might have seen me selecting east us east india central U, us all this you might have seen what exactly are the, these these are nothing but these are region now this is one region now before i go in and go deep dive into this region and all you understand one more thing guys what is data centers firstly on prem like suppose there are companies having their own on prem data centers what do i mean by that why can't everyone go and create have their own cloud why do we have only limited audience limited vendors such as azure aws google all these big players why only they have cloud can't anyone go and create their own cloud and what do i mean by cloud also so all this yeah tell me no, sir. i think is is the cost management Yes. Uh, plus, um, um, and uh, you said data center. Cloud is basically uh, it's just a uh, data center that's being rented out to various uh, third-party clients. Perfect. The first and the very important factor that all companies cannot create their own cloud is because cost effective. This is not cost effective the maximum a company can do they can create a couple of data center of theirs what is data center let's understand that at the very granular level first before we jump on to understanding this region data center is nothing but it's a location guys like if suppose i am in mumbai my company is hosted in mumbai i'll have a data center nearby to mumbai itself i'll not have a data center in in new york i'll have a data center in mumbai okay because it's nearby to my company plus i can have a wired connection a high bandwidth fiber cable connected to my office to which i'll be able to manage my data center okay so data center is nothing but it's a physical location which has its own networking which will have its own power source which will have its own cooling this is to manage your data center because you need cooling networking power source all this you need it secondly it has all racks racks is nothing like it's like a cupboard just imagine it's a cupboard in your house in which you're placing your clothing so over here the only difference is the racks what you see you will have all your hardware devices what are the hardware devices your cpu your memory your firewalls your switches your what all other things you needed for your uh, compute perspective all this will be there inside those racks these racks will be each racks will have its own power supply networking so suppose there are 10 racks so your each rack will have its own individual power supply so that even if one of the rack goes down then the other rack is able to help you out to serve your purpose so 
this is what a data center is all about it has its own networking cooling power sources and on top of it it will have all the compute memory and all the hardware devices which is required managing a data center is not easy task you need a data center experts you need a networking guy you need a cooling guy you need a power supply guy there are a good amount of human resources is needed to manage and run a successful data center then on top of it you will need you will be using so suppose you are using switches of cisco so you will be using cisco uh, dom portal to manage your switch if you are using firewall of some other company you will be using the domain of that company to manage that that firewall so how many domains you have suppose you are using for multiple sources then how many domains you are managing there are so many domains so what you need you will need l1 l2 l3 guys also to do all this for you okay so this is one data center one location i'm talking about there are so many things involved there are so many things you need to do so as rightly said earlier it is not cost effective and this cannot be this cloud setup cannot be done by everyone okay even though suppose you are a very big firm you have set up your own data center now the max you can set up is one or two data center correct now your application is getting utilized throughout in the globe people in japan us india uh, uk everyone is using your application now think about your latency you have a data center in a one in india mumbai the second one is in new, in new york and there is a people in australia who is trying to access your vms who is trying to access your uh, application and definitely they can access the only difference will be low latency they will have difficult accessing your bandwidth application because it will load because just see the transit how many hops it is traveling your network is traveling like if it's hitting your mumbai servers then from mumbai to australia just see the transit happening so definitely the page will take 1 minute 2 minutes to load so definitely a business will take a tool and they will not have any even though you have spent crores in setting up data centers people globally are not having the same benefit of using your application the one who is using in mumbai has a drastic speed the one who is using in new york they have a very good speed but the one who is isolated where your data centers are not there then they are facing difficulty performance difficulties then again go and set up data center in us set up in australia also set up in japan also then you become your then you become cloud provider that is the difference between everyone setting up and these cloud providers setting now this if you go and look into microsoft microsoft has data such data centers microsoft has not just one or two they have n number of data centers across the world and all these data centers are very very tightly coupled with each other so there is very less latency what you will find so even if you are accessing any application in india the same speed you will find it in us because that request is getting served from us data center which is nearby to you okay that is the difference what cloud providers have advantage they have same goes with amazon amazon have n number of data centers and the same goes with google google is coming up now guys google is not nearby to amazon and azure right now but yeah it will come eventually if google has lots of money and they can spend a lot of money setting up all this initially okay and they have the bandwidth they have the resources they can do it for so google as if now you will hear gcp a lot because they are offering very cheap as compared to azure and aws gcp is offering very cheap so you may come up with companies wherein they are using gcp also okay but as compared to if you take the data center count gcp is nowhere right now as compared to azure and aws so azure let's talk about azure now azure not just one data center what azure to maintain this availability the things which we are talking about what they have come up with 
in one region so this east us is one region in one region itself they got not just one but three zone created this is known as zone one the other is zone two the third one is zone three now what is this zoning is all about now this zone is nothing but guys this is your data center one data center two data center three so in one region not just one or two they got three three data centers added and all these three data centers are very tightly coupled with each other so when i say tightly coupled what do i mean there is a wire connection which is going across the fiber cable connection which is going across all these three zones with less than millisecond latency with less than lesser than i'm just talking about lesser than 3 second latency each zone will have its own power supply each zone will have its own networking each zone will have its own cooling facility so when you're designing your application you can replicate your vms like suppose you created a vm in zone 1 you can easily replicate this vm in zone 2 also you can even replicate this vm into zone 3 also what if if zone 1 is down this is completely down because in that area there was some flood there was some terrorist attack or something has happened which you cannot think of so this is down all your load will get transferred on zone 2 and your request will start getting served from this location this is called as availability zones availability zone expands the level of control you have to maintain the availability of your application and data on your vms so what exactly availability zone is it's nothing but it's a physical separate zone within azure region okay so there are three availability zone per supported region so each region will have three zones and your replication will happen you can select which zone you want to create your resources and eventually the resource will be replicated in other zone each availability zone has distinct power supply network and cooling so when you're designing your solution you can use these zones to replicate your application by this way you can protect your app or end data from the loss of any data center if some wow if any data center goes down you can protect your application and your data so if any of the zone is compromised this statement is very important if any of the zone is compromised guys then you can easily replicate your apps and data will be available on other zones if any zone get compromised then you will have your application and data available on other zones this is what availability zone is all about makes okay. sense from the theory perspective what is availability zone for example zone 1 is breakdown happen how the mm -hmm. data is passing from zone 1 to zone 2 and zone 1 to zone 3 for example suppose any earthquakes happen in japan at the situation mm -hmm. entire zone can be collapsed at mm -hmm. the situation through wire we are connecting from zone 1 to zone 2 zone 1 to zone 3 at the situation how the data centers maintain may know okay so when you say japan you're taking the complete country so in japan there are multiple regions the japan yeah. itself so in japan like suppose this is japan this japan will have multiple cities like in japan which city we tokyo then we'll have some other city then tokyo is one region again tokyo becomes one region for me okay in tokyo there are couple of cities in tokyo we'll have three zones zone 1 i'll have zone 2 i'll have zone 
so i'll have three data centers so i'm talking about in tokyo i have three data center okay now in tokyo just assume this 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 part got some issue and this data center is down so when you select availability zone option when you're creating your resources your things are replicated in other zones and as i said this is all these three zones are tightly coupled with high fiber cables so there in the backdrop there is already replication happening over here if this is gone this will be available for you automatically instantly it will so there is no endpoint changing so if you think that the, you need to go and make changes to the dns entry and all no there's no endpoint changing you can simply add this instance available over here automatically why this is happening automatically why um, microsoft takes a sla guarantee of 99.59 this is because they are already replicating by default and they will charge you it's not they are not doing it for free when you select when i go and create a vm i'll show you how do we select availability zone so when you select a zone or automatically things will start getting replicated okay and they will take it and now this complete tokyo is down guys now there is a different there is a problem now the tokyo itself is down now there is a problem okay you need to have something in other region then in that case this is where your disaster recovery thing comes in picture that is something i'll talk about later for now let's not get confused let's focus on availability zone concept make sense hopefully that answers your question yeah yeah yeah, yeah. only for uh, subnets uh, subnet down at the situation there is no problem for the origin is the problem origin data center is a breakdown at the situation it's not a possible is it correct correct no if the origin if if the complete origin this is your region itself this is this is tokyo region the tokyo region is down then availability zone will not come in picture because that then availability zone cannot do anything because everything is down right now correct now in okay. that case how do we tackle such things there is a different way to tackle we have you should have a replication happening in all together in other region then there's no problem you can change the endpoints and your request will start getting served from other region that is possible but that is something i'll talk about that later for now let's stick with availability zones okay we'll, okay we'll see a demo on this how do we create availability zones uh, it's already 8 3 now so let's not do the demo let's do the demo on monday along with availability set there's one more concept which we need to understand availability set which I'll explain you on Monday and we'll do the demo together. Okay. In the meanwhile, if anyone has any questions, please do let me know or we can wind up the call and guys make sure whatever we did in this week. So we have spoke more about virtual networking. We talked about energies, ASGs, NAD, Bastion, VNet pairing. These are very important concept which you will come across. So make sure to practice as much you can. And if you have any doubt, any questions, we have a WhatsApp group created. You can put down your uh, doubts in the WhatsApp group and I can or others can help you out more, mostly. And practice this, whatever the practical we have done till now, go and practice this because next upcoming, the next week, it's all practical wherein we'll be setting a availability zone, availability set, load balancer, We'll be deploying our own application. Then we'll see how the network is getting routed from one VM to other VM. Then at the end, we'll be setting a VM virtual machine scale sets. That is very important, even from DevOps perspective. So things will keep on adding. Make sure you go and practice and be up to the mark and make sure you are with me whatever we am doing whatever i am doing go and practice as soon as possible don't keep it for tomorrow or don't keep it that i will do it on weekends and things like that practice as soon as possible whenever you get time i know you guys are busy you're already working things like that i know all this but try if you're spending money and spending your time learning this concepts then at least give one more hour 
to practice all this okay so that's it for me for today guys if you have any issues any concerns any queries please do let me know before we wind up the call for today anyone yeah mm, okay thank you you're welcome victoria anyone else guys hello Mr. Okay. can you uh show me how uh you can change the password in the vm please okay yeah okay. perfect okay. i'll have to create a quick vm for that let's go and create a vm okay while we are creating a vm guys this is where the region you select so this is the region which i was talking about over here okay now availability option now this is the place wherein you can select see i don't have availability zone option in this region west us so what i'll to have to do i have to go in east us now you can see why now again this is a question now in order to and in order to have this availability zone option you need to the minimum requirement is you need to have in that region three zones if you don't have three zones in that region, you cannot avail availability zone option so in west us they don't have three zones in west us they just, so hence i was not getting this availability zone option over there okay so keep that in mind we'll talk more about this later for now let's create Hopefully you have selected authentication type as password, not SSH public key. If it's password, then let me set up a password for now. Okay, let me review and create. Okay this is the costing also it's showing 3.2670 inr per hour this is just your vm cost guys there are other costs like as i said public ip and all this also will get assigned with this virtual machine so there are other costs costing also involved so keep that in mind um hi just mm -hmm. um while it's building i was wondering because um while we're doing our training is it would would you advise us to use the spot instances because they're quite a bit cheaper or spot instance i will advise don't even go for spot instance stick with the free tier instances what you get because i'm i don't need much resources i need one vcp mm -hmm. and one memory and linux os is more than enough and that comes into free tier spot instance when you have something to keep it for a month or so then at that time spot instance will make more sense as if not for okay. training spot instance will not help you okay, okay. so Thank you. this is this is my vm guys so if you remember you suppose you have forgotten your password if you want to connect there are ways you can directly connect through ssh and it will connect you connect you through ssh it will give you a way how do you connect okay now this is giving you a way about the keys but in my case we are using user id and password i can directly make use of this public ip and i can connect but the issue is over here where is the public ip the issue over here is that we have forgotten the password in such case you have to come down and in your help category there's an option of reset password come to this reset password then you have to put in your username again put in your password suppose if you have forgotten your password this is the place put in your username this is my username and you can put in your password and again you can try to log in once you reset your password go to overview page again once you have run i have not forgotten my password so i'm not resetting copy this open bash shell 
in my next session i'll show you how do we connect with keys so just remind me i'll show you how do we connect with keys in my next session so just put in your user id and your password it will prompt you for a password and make sure the port 22 is open guys if you don't open the port 22 you'll not be able to do ssh now just do test at one two three four five six seven eight this is the password which i use test at one two three four five seven eight just keep the same practice now this is you are logged in if you want to reset go and reset hopefully this answers your question i think who has asked this thank you thank you no problem okay thank you very much guys let's see you on monday and let's continue this topic bye bye